what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and we'll continue with our basic series today and if you're new to my channel and you have not subscribed to it then please subscribe to it and if you like this video then click the thumbs up and if you have any questions queries or comments regarding any of my other videos or anything on this video while you watch this video till the end then please let me know in the comment section and if you are interested in doing some donation for the continuing of this channel then you can go to the comments below in and you can see the link to paypal and go and donate something there or else if you want me to make a video on any other topic then please let me know in the comments your opinion is very valuable to me all right so what is today's topic today's topic is one of the most important topics in astrology and unfortunately it is not much discussed yes it is discussed but not very much in detail the topic of today is the round table conference <laughs> what is round table conference and yes before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you'll find him <laughs> and please have a look at my new bhagavad gita series which i started two weeks back you people are watching it but i want that many people many more people should watch it now there you go the round table conference basically what is a round table conference it used to happen in uk where mahatma gandhi used to go maybe it still happens i don't know in the time of the british where mahatma gandhi used to be invited from india and he used to go and he used to debate there about independence about this about that and then what used to happen is there were many people sitting in a round table and they used to give their opinions it was a group it was a collection of many senior authorities of the british empire who were considered very valuable by the british and whose opinions were very much valued so similarly <laughs> the nine planets are like those members of the round table conference which is happening where is the round table conference happening it is happening in everybody's horoscope because the horoscope ultimately is the end result the end output the end vector of all the nine planets the horoscope is not as we see in the west there's more focus on the plan uh, the sign where the sun is placed which is known as the sun sign or um, vedic astrology focuses more on the moon sign yes that is why that is known as rashi whenever somebody asks what is your rashi you say okay my rashi is so and so capricorn aquarius libra depending on where is your moon placed yes although every planet is in a rashi and there are 12 rashis but still when we specifically mention rashi in india it is referred to the sign of the moon now and after the calculations became more precise the concept of lagna became more prominent yes not that lagna became prominent now lagna was prominent from eternity from all time to come for ages but why earlier they used to give more weightage to the moon the moon sign because it was not very easy to calculate the exact lagna because lagna is the point where you are born sun is transiting sun is going from the first house to the 12th house to the 11th house then to the 10th house like that the sun is going but when you are born at a specific time that is your lagna that is you that is why lagna is the first house so as astrology is progressing the specifics is give, given more importance to the lagna yes nowadays and even transits many astrologers study from the lagna and also from the moon because the lagna will tell you regarding transits which areas physically the planets will affect when they are uh, moving in the horoscope and from the moon when you check they will tell you that how are those planets affecting you mentally or internally that is why transits have to be studied both from the lagna and from the moon now some people say that transits from the moon will definitely yield results from the lagna it may not yield results and some people say that transits from the lagna will yield more results from the moon it will not yield results none of them is true 
true because they have their separate agendas the lagna and the moon is separate unless the moon is sitting in the lagna itself for example if you are a scorpio ascendant and you have moon in scorpio that means your moon is in the lagna that means now the transits will become very important for you because from the ascendant which is the first house your body the physical world how is it manifesting and also from the moon that means how it is affecting you mentally that is the same so primarily we see that these three factors are considered the sun moon and the ascendant and lord of the ascendant where the lagnesh is going lagnesh is the lagna lord the lord of the ascendant the planet ruling the first house but in my experience i have seen it is some something which is still incomplete when i say incomplete i mean to say that you cannot just say that a person is a combination of his sun sign his moon sign and the ascendant that simply doesn't happen because the whole horoscope has to be studied the integration of the horoscope is very important and that is where the round table conference comes into play yes so basically what is round table conference it is like the horoscope the horoscope is a living example of a round table conference there are nine planets including rahu and ketu if you consider them planets or as chaya graha whatever you want to consider them planets in the way that they affect us they are known as grahas graha word does not have a translation in english unfortunately but we loosely translate them as uh, planets for our own understanding yes and there we include sun also as a planet and on the contrary sun is not considered to be a planet in scientific world now whenever we see individual placements like sun is placed in the 10th house they say that it is great for things like government it's great for leadership positions it gets directional strength there that is undoubtedly true there's no doubt about it but does it mean that the person will land up in the government itself well if that is the case all the people who are born in the afternoon from 11:30 to 1:30 roughly nearby that time in the summer or winter sun is in the 10th house in the winter it will be a bit late after 2 o'clock i guess so if that would be the case well everybody born in the afternoon would be a government official or why only gov- government official they can be a uh, they can be a clerk in the government office or they can be the prime minister of a country so do you see the difference of range it is so great now then somebody will say oh no no maybe sun is in libra it's debilitated that is why he became a clerk in the government he did not become a high ranking official okay his son was in aries now he was a cancer ascendant and for cancer aries is the 10th house so if sun is placed in the 10th house then it is also exalted apart from being in digbala which is directional strength therefore you will say that okay now uh, sun is doubly powerful that is why he became a ias officer or he became a very senior government official yes in india we have the system of ias officers or politicians but why does it not happen that anybody who has sun in the 10th house lands up being in the government either he is a clerk or a minister or a officer or the prime minister or the president or the dictator it simply doesn't happen all the time why because you have to understand the round table conference it is like there are nine people who are sitting here okay and you are somewhere in between <laughs> and then the sun is here moon is here then venus mercury mars saturn jupiter rahu ketu all of them are here so everybody's opinion will ultimately matter and at the end of the day the end result is simply the harmonic flow of the chart yes harmonic flow means whichever direction all the planets are agreeing only that will happen it will never happen that somebody is agreeing to this somebody is not agreeing to that and that happens it cannot happen do you get it i will explain it to you for example if take the example of marriage typical example marriage yes when i talk of marriage i am not talking of the seventh house here or i am not talking of venus take the event of a wedding here rather than calling it marriage i would call it wedding the day of your marriage so if you take that as a round table conference and if you see that 
who will get married because there are some people who are not destined to get married right many people they don't get married most of them get married but what i'm trying to say is if you take the event of wedding as a prominent event in a person's life then let us see how this round table conference actually plays out in the person's life first of all which are the planets that we have to consider serially first we have to consider the planet sun yes sun will represent the person because sun represents the body <laughs> if the person is only not there then who will get married to whom <laughs> you understand right the person has to be there physically otherwise the marriage cannot happen so sun is very important that is why sun is given very much importance because sun represents the soul the ego where the person identifies with then moon represents the mind what if the person is there and everybody is ready but he is not in a mental state to get married he feels that no no it will be a burden for me now i am not finding the right person this that any reason he can give then will the marriage take place no it will not take place because he is not into it you understand <laughs> then which planet will matter we have the planet mars which is what which is fire food and all this without food can you imagine going to a wedding and there's no food <laughs> maybe theoretically it can be possible okay i am not talking of those scenarios where there's a calamity on the day of the wedding i am not saying of all those things where there's a terrorist attack near your wedding or there's a huge torrential shower of rain i am not saying of all those things which also happen these days but in general i am saying whenever you go to a party or to a wedding or to a ceremony connected to religion then always food is served there yes and the fire is there when you uh, in uh, hinduism when you uh, go round the fire uh, seven times as you say saath phere so mars becomes very important there without mars you cannot have the event of the wedding yes because then it will not be a wedding it will just be a contract if there is no fire and then which planet becomes important jupiter becomes important jupiter is who jupiter is the priest yes jupiter is the growth the expansion and the sanction the blessings of the gurus the gods yes blessings of the almighty blessings of the venerable ones the senior ones those those things are represented by jupiter and that is why after we get their blessings we only uh, move ahead in the domain of marriage especially in countries like india therefore jupiter is also important for the wedding you see and then who is there there's venus venus is the wife <laughs> or the female uh, people who are there so can you imagine a wedding where there are no females it cannot be a wedding right <laughs> Mars will represent the male friends and Venus will represent the female friends and Mercury represents the people in general your relatives can you imagine a wedding without relatives it cannot happen that is why sun and mercury are always close <laughs> and who else is remaining sun is gone moon is gone mars is gone saturn saturn is remaining now what is saturn saturn will represent the labor yes those people who are helping to make the marriage happen yes those people who are giving their blood sweat and toil and they are making sure every arrangement is happening because saturn gets exalted in libra which is the sign of the other people yes other people means it is the sign of work basically working with other people in collaboration the event libra yes so saturn represents all the people who are serving the person who is giving you coffee the person who is giving you jalebi all these people are represented by saturn therefore saturn also becomes very important so if there are no people to help you in the wedding how will you yourself go and may uh, conduct the wedding it's not possible right and then what is rahu and ketu rahu ketu represents our past imagine all the things all the people all the desires all the connections from our past lives the karma has to sanction their presence the entire even actually rahu ketu is the most important play they are the most important players for the wedding because unless all the people their karma is destined to be interchanged exchanged within the on the day of the wedding the event cannot take place yes many people might have wanted to see your marriage in their past life <laughs> so now they are in this life their desire is getting fulfilled yes 
then that's how you have to see every planet will have their own say every planet will try to speak in a particular way and to the degree all of them are speaking in the same tone to that degree the result will be the result will be very strong very firm either positive or negative that will depend on what they are speaking yes so for example if there is a time when a person has to get married then somehow in the horoscope within the horoscope every every planet in transit or in the dasha has to agree otherwise it is simply not going to happen somehow it will not happen and before going to transits and time periods we have to check the promise of the original birth chart for even specially like uh, getting a job getting a degree or getting married yes if the event is not promised in your chart how much ever transits are there how much ever time periods you are running of good planets or bad planets <laughs> benefics malefics the event will not take place it simply cannot take place <coughs> for example if there are combinations in the chart which suggests that a person will not get married yes that means he will not get married by seeing the chart it doesn't matter jupiter transits their seventh house or saturn transits their seventh house or they are running the dasha of the seventh lord or as per gemini they are running the dasha of the sign of the seventh house or where the seventh lord is placed or the sign containing venus yes these are the ways by which we try to time marriage but if the birth chart itself is telling that because of these combinations the marriage cannot take place then the wedding will never happen because there are some planets so adamantly against the marriage when they are so much adamant that means their presence itself is not there yes especially if planets like who, who are related to the 7th house or the 7th lord or venus or jupiter especially these four then the flow of having no marriage becomes more strong it becomes very uh, very prominent similarly take the example of a career promotion for example if uh, there there are uh, indications that this person will rise very high then when the dasha and the transits appear then that will happen but that promise has to be there in the horoscope every planet have to support it in some way or the other and that is why for some people they will support it in a very good way in a very large way in a huge way that is why they become presidents prime ministers they become like uh, the great actors like great again i mean not by the way of the scriptures but great in the eyes of today's public and they get massive name fame massive popularity but everybody doesn't get that yes because every planet is not speaking in that direction so therefore when we ask questions wherever we go in any astrological forum in youtube or wherever many times we address these questions that let me give you a typical example okay saturn in the 5th house it is good or bad <laughs> it is a very difficult question to answer saturn in the 5th house can have a million meanings and depending on the sign it will vary yes and depending on who else is sitting in the 5th house that will also change the results of saturn in the 5th house depending on which other planets are aspecting saturn that will also change the nature of saturn and also of the 5th house because whenever you take a planet you have to consider the house yes if you do not consider the house then how will you know which house it is affecting so saturn in the 5th house will affect the 5th house yes there's no doubt about it and then you can also say that okay it is aspecting the 7th house with its third aspect that means some issue in the wedding or delay in the wedding can happen well those things are fine those are standard dictums we know all of them but that doesn't mean it will happen you have to check what are the other planets saying yes for example if saturn is in the 5th house it is aspecting the 7th house what if there are great planets sitting in the 7th house for example if the 5th lord is in the 7th that is a very auspicious combination for love marriage but e even in general because 5th house shows purva punya 
yes or what if the ninth lord is sitting there or what if the lagna lord is sitting there or what if a benefic like jupiter is sitting provided it is not owning bad houses provided jupiter so then what will happen then the things may not work out in favor of saturn but then saturn may work in some other way for example if there are two benefics like jupiter venus in the seventh house and if the chart is overall supporting marriage then there can be situations where the marriage is very early because the benefics give marriage very early they they try to give you things very easily when i say early i don't mean at the age of 10 but uh, generally uh, in india which is the age now around 26 27 that is the time when people get married these days 25 to 28 is the uh, time where most of them get married so at that time the marriage can happen but again saturn is aspecting so saturn will still give some effects to the seventh house it may not be able to delay the marriage that much but it will still delay you understand it will still do some typical saturn's job now delay does uh, saturn's job means it doesn't mean it will only delay there can be different other factors for example the person who you end up marrying the person can be from a uh, relatively lower background than yours family wise uh, financially socially mostly socially they can be from a bit lower lower than you in family status in their family influence etc but again you have to see which other planets are affecting the 7th house what if jupiter is sitting in the 3rd house from there it is throwing its 5th aspect to the 7th house then what you will do <laughs> so there you see it cannot be answered what saturn in the 5th will do and what saturn in the 5th will not do but that does not mean we do not study what saturn will do in the 5th house saturn irrespective of whichever planets are sitting in the 7th house it will throw its third aspect yes therefore the aspect of hard work because third house is the house of purushartha it is the house of what you say parakram in hindi in sanskrit parakram means courage so these people have to show tremendous courage towards their 7th house which means they have to put a lot of hard work and effort wherever the third aspect of saturn is falling especially that is why saturn in the 4th house people i have seen they have tremendous difficulty in uh, matters of stomach trouble yes their stomach is very troublesome because from the 4th house the third aspect falls in the 6th house 6th house is the house of your digestion this serious issue is issue with the digestion yes so that is how you have to know now what if saturn is exalted then the effects will vary what if saturn is debilitated in aries then the results will vary so basically i am stressing on two points to summarize this video first point is you have to individually study what a planet is doing in which sign how is it itself getting influenced by other planets what if saturn is been aspected by rahu and what if saturn is been aspected by jupiter also and after that you have to see what saturn is doing for example venus if it is with jupiter and mercury then it will have a different flavor altogether and within that also it will depend which sign it is which house it is is one of them exalted there or if one of them is in its mool trigon if one of them is its in debilitation yes and which house this is happening jupiter mercury venus as we know it has the famous saraswati yoga saraswati yoga is very powerful if it is happening in the first fifth or ninth house especially yes but then what if saturn is also there <laughs> so then the effects of saraswati yoga will be modified the person will be bit more realistic he may not be that creative yes what if rahu is sitting there <laughs> with all these or what if only jupiter venus is there yes so it will vary according to the nature of the horoscope yes but individually they will still have their effects and what happens ultimately will be the sum total of what all the planets are speaking so that is why the most difficult thing in astrology and the most difficult thing for astrologers to study apart from because it's very easy to study the individual placements okay how how difficult it is suppose there's a malefic in the 4th house any malefic and moon is also in a difficult sign like scorpio and suppose your 
fourth lord is also in the sixth house eighth house or twelfth house i'm just giving some standard examples so these are three indications that the person has a troubled mind when i say mind i do not only include the natural karaka for mind and mood which is moon i am also including the fourth house and the fourth lord yes or the mother can have struggle or your relationship with the mother can be a difficult one a difficult one and she can be very difficult to deal with these are standard indications if these three placement if these three placements are there if moon is spoiled there are malefics in the fourth house and the fourth lord is also in a difficult sign or in a difficult house especially the eighth house then we can have an indication individually that the mind of the person can be very troubled he or she will be very unpredictable he will he or she can do things which we can never imagine that how can a person do such things right <laughs> but that does not mean that will ultimately happen because what if jupiter is sitting with moon in the sign of scorpio then what then the results will be different then what will happen is the person from all these things will learn a lot of lessons <laughs> and there you see how the change is happening or what if saturn is sitting there with moon then the person can run into depression because of all these placements yes then the yoga the negativity of the yoga can be much more severe yes so the two things which is important to know is first individually you have to know the placements and ultimately you have to see the flow of the chart the harmonic flow of the chart where is it flowing how is it flowing what everybody is telling yes for example if somebody has very difficult relationships then i have seen in my personal experience venus has to be very badly spoiled <laughs> until that time it doesn't happen and how how do you know if uh, venus is very terribly spoiled just see how how, how difficultly it is placed if it is placed in signs like virgo or scorpio these are very difficult signs for venus yes to deal with scorpio in general but for venus virgo also and even fire signs are very difficult for venus to deal with because the water is extinguished <laughs> and if venus is with enemies like moon or mars then also these these placements can give very difficult uh, relationships but does it mean it will happen no it's not like that there are many people who do not have that even after having difficult uh, situations of venus they may have something else which is very good their mind may be very stable the sun may be very strong they may be very committed towards one partner then even if venus the karaka for romance love sensuality sexuality uh, that that beauty within the relationship is not there still if sun is strong the person will stay committed to that person but if sun is also weak along with venus yes then things can go haywire or if moon is very strong then the person will be emotionally stable although he may not be very happy within the relationship yes but he will still be able to continue the relationship but what if sun moon venus all three are spoiled then that's a disaster because then you have difficult relationships which is satis which is signified by a difficult venus and above that you are not mentally strong nor you have a sense of purpose of commitment which is the sun then things will go haywire there will be mayhem within your life <laughs> if all three are happening simultaneously that is why venus will stay in virgo for how many for 20 25 days 25 days roughly but does it mean that once in a year whenever venus is in virgo all the 25 days whoever is born in this earth they will all have divorces or they will only have breakups no it doesn't mean like that it simply means that that part of the relation that part of their life which is relationship is in a difficult state but will it have a overall impact on their life so badly no maybe for that you have to check the other planets what if jupiter is also in the sign of virgo there or if jupiter is aspecting from pisces then the situation will vary then the person will try to be very open minded and broad minded about the other person he or she will try to give space to the other person if jupiter is aspecting he or she will value the other person even though a virgo venus will only find faults <laughs> because virgo is the sign of criticality critical nature critical thinking yes that is why venus gets debilitated there 
but what if jupiter is aspecting from there then the person can uh, have more positivity within the relationship yes so anybody who has a difficult venus doesn't mean that uh, that will actually have an impact very severely in your life that will only be acting if all the other planets they are also speaking in the same tone <laughs> do you understand what is tone tone means in the same flavor then it is to be understood that this particular area it can be career relationships they are in a difficult state for example for career if the 10th lord is not very well placed if it is in a dusthana the 6th house 8th house 12th house and if the natural karaka for career the 10th house which is sun mercury and saturn and the lagna lord very important because lagna shows the purpose lagna shows ideals the lagna lord's placement will tell you how much idealistic the person is and all of these have a role with the career and if there are debilitated planets sitting in the 10th house along with this if all the other combinations which i just mentioned all of these are happening in the chart then we can say that sun is difficult here moon uh, saturn is also placed difficult in a difficult dignity then the 10th lord is also in a difficult sign for for that particular planet then we can say that the person will have challenges in career yes but just if the 10th lord is placed in 6th house 8th house 12th house you cannot say that the person will have a difficult career because 10th lord in the 6th can mean that he's a uh, he he can serve other people yes 6th house is the house of service 10th lord in the 12th can mean he is in a multinational company in a foreign land yes or he is doing business re uh, work related to winding and dining because 12th house represents winding and dining in the night winding up things dining till late night 8th house is the house of secrecy Uh, the russian president i don't know what you call him president or dictator whatever you want to call him uh, he the vladimir putin he has his 10th lord in the 8th house and 8th house is what 8th house is the house of secrecy yes and he is a libra ascendant and for libra moon is the 10th lord because the cancer sign falls in the 10th house and 8th house for libra is the sign taurus where moon gets exalted so for libra whenever 10th lord is in the 8th house it is a great placement to have because now although 8th house is a dusthana house because it is the house of secrecy and secrecy is very dangerous you may be killed that is why 10th lord in the 8th can uh, have difficulties but what if it is exalted and he was a great spy he has done activities which nobody has ever done such things he has achieved so just because 10th lord is in the 8th house doesn't mean it is bad <laughs> just because 10th lord is uh, for example su suppose uh, you take the example of scorpio ascendant the planet moon rules the 9th house so if moon is sitting in the lagna itself so you have the 9th lord of spirituality in the lagna now that can still be difficult for the moon because moon gets debilitated there yes so before telling that ninth lord in the lagna is good or bad or maybe it is good or bad for the planet but how is it in impacting the overall chart you have to see that so we have to learn the placements of individual planets of how they perform in that particular sign at the time same time being influenced by other planets that's the first thing and then secondly we have to consider what other planets are speaking not in terms of that planet in the context of the overall chart for example relationships as i said relationships is not only controlled by venus it is controlled by every planet because every planet has its element within relationships within marriages yes every planet has their importance jupiter is the children what if your venus sun moon are very well placed but if jupiter is in a uh, difficult state then you might lack overall contentment in life and that same feeling will come within your marriage also because your marriage is a part of your life so there you see jupiter is very important that is why jupiter is considered to be very important otherwise we cannot just take placement of venus because what if venus is difficult but jupiter is very well placed with sun and moon then the person overall has a happiness a contentment in his life so that difficult part of venus doesn't uh, matter doesn't bog him too much 
him or her <laughs> so you will not find the person having divorces or complaining about relationships now when i say divorce divorce can be due to 10 different reasons divorces can be due to difficulties within the mother in law the wife the in laws or due to n number of factors but when i am saying divorce here i mean difficulties within the uh, relationship of the husband and the wife because of that i am saying divorce so if sun moon jupiter are relatively strong then it may not matter that much that okay venus is not very strong here but what if all four are destroyed then you will only see the person running from one partner to the other 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 <laughs> i think we have met so many people like that right <laughs> i know tons of people first they got into a relationship when they were at the age of 17 and then when they were 19 they were with another person in 22 they are with somebody else 25 another person 28 another person then in 32 they will be with somebody else why that is happening don't think that is happening because of venus because if only venus was difficult in their chart after some time they would have realized that somehow relationships are not meant for me if you have had one two three breaks then maybe you would have not married but that you can only do when your sun moon jupiter is strong because then you will find purpose in something which is beyond sexuality which is venus beyond love romance of this world i am not talking of spirituality i am talking of anything else there are many people who are not spiritual but who are still into some other things apart from marriage so that can happen if venus is spoiled and other planets are relatively well placed but if the other planets are also spoiled then if you have a bad venus then you will always keep searching from person to person from this person to that person to that person and you will not find contentment anywhere yes so whenever you see a difficult venus do not jump into conclusion that this person will not be happy in relationships first you have to see where the flow of the chart is happening and if you can understand that well then you have mastered the game and then you will know okay this planet is not contributing to this flow but if the overall flow is very positive then the person will be able to overcome difficulties and if the overall flow is negative even if venus is well placed in libra i have seen so many people i know who have venus placed in libra they have had one of the worst terrible relationship experiences <laughs> i have seen people with venus in libra being more terrible than being uh, venus in virgo people why because their overall life is not in harmony so how will their relationships be in harmony even if venus is in mool trigon in libra <laughs> so venus can uh, help you to some extent within the area of relationships but it does not guarantee that things will last okay for that you have to see the whole horoscope the whole horoscope flavor is very important so it's been a long video that is it from my side i hope you understood what i wanted to say so we have to understand what every planet does in a sign and we also have to understand where the flow is happening and for that we have to check the entire horoscope we cannot just uh, see that okay maybe this is there here this is there there so this will be bad this will be good so if you ask questions to me for example that okay venus in the 8th house is good or bad i cannot answer the question <laughs> because first of all i do not know which sign venus is i do not know which nakshatra venus is in i do not know which other planets are affecting venus i do not know which degree venus is in i do not know which lagna you are <laughs> i do not know anything so i cannot answer the question venus in the 8th house is good or bad yes so we have to do full reading a full consultation only then we will understand and this is not with me this is with any other astrologer if we want uh, concrete predictions and concrete results then it is best that we go for entire analysis of the chart with whoever it is otherwise you will only be dissatisfied you will only get half hearted answers other because you will feel that okay this is not happening with me suppose sun is in libra then there are standard indications that this happens that this happens that happens the person is too much attached to the opposite sex for example this is one of the indications but many times it may not happen <laughs>
Why it is not happening? The sun in Libra is not working. No, it's perfectly working. But there are some other planets who are forcing the vibration of sun in Libra to go in a different zone. Because of which that sun in Libra nature is getting subdued. But it is still there. <laughs> it may not affect the person too much in the real life, but it will still be there internally. And if other planets are also speaking in the same tone, then that will be prominent in his lifestyle also. Okay, so if you have any questions, queries or comments related to this video or the things which I spoke, then please let me know in the comment section or if you want me to make any other video, then please let me know. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe to it. Until next time, wish you good luck in the analysis of the flow of the chart. Okay, see you. Bye-bye.